When you want convenience, you want Neighbors Express, where you'll always find friendly, courteous service every time you visit us. Fill up with pay at the pump. Take advantage of our bigger and better selection of beverages and tobacco products. Enjoy our popular crushed ice with your favorite fountain drink. And you can always enjoy a fresh, hot breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So stop by and see us today, where it's always convenient and friendly. Neighbors Express, locations at I-16 at 441 and in Cedar Grove, where we provide farm fuel for all our customers. When you want convenience, you want Neighbors Express. products and installation since 1985. That's Four Seasons. Welcome everybody. I'm glad to have with me today Connie Gay. She actually goes to Liberty Baptist Church, but there is a group of women who got together uh, this past Friday and is doing a remarkable thing. Uh, Connie, first of all, thank you for joining me today. I know you're running around everything, everywhere, trying to coordinate everything, but thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Okay, tell me how all this started. Tell me what you're doing and how did this start? We are making surgical masks like what I'm wearing. I have the elastic on the ears. It's two pieces of 100% um, cotton and the elastic on it is um, either an eighth or a fourth of an inch. And we're sewing these in our homes because of the social distancing. We can't get together as a group, so we're sewing them at home. We, are, uh, we have a system worked out where we are delivering on porches, picking up from porches. The Sheriff's Department's helping us out by picking up what we have washed and ready to go, and they're transporting them to the medical centers for us um, that are in need. We have a Facebook group. It's called uh, Medical Mask Mission Group. People are uh, putting their needs there. We're meeting their needs from the list that we're gathering on the um, Facebook. Of course, we're all getting, you know, uh, private messages and people texting you, I want one, I need one. So we're trying to coordinate it, and uh, Rhonda Baker is actually the coordinator. We got several different sites set up in the um, county where people are, like different areas, like down in Cadwell. We got a lady that's um, using her porch for drop-off pickup. Uh, we got one in Dublin, we got one in East Dublin, um, but we have several of those around. Um, and we're just all sewing at our home. Um, people are donating left or right, they're donating elastic, they're donating fabric. Um, Sometimes we can't find the elastic, so we're using ponytail holders or these braided, um, these are um, braided uh, ponytail, um, they call them hairband. Um, Anyway, you can buy them at the Dollar Tree. There's seven of them on a pack for a dollar. We can cut one of those in half and use it to make a mask. We're using the uh, regular little ponytail holder elastics. And we're just sewing for um, whoever that's in the medical field that needs them. And now we're, we're reaching out to law enforcement. Um, we have had several uh, different people to reach out to us. We've had people request from Eastman, Fort Valley, Sandersville, Cochrane, Trutland. Wrightsville and as far as Effingham County Fire Department. We have not been able to send to Effingham County yet because we're still trying to meet our local needs. So what if somebody's watching us now and says, well, I can sew, or somebody's watching and says, well, I can't sew, but I know how to cut, or I can do this. Uh, how, how can y'all use these different volunteers? We have people set up on, um, on their porches. You can come, I'll, we'll give those addresses, but you can come and pick up um, for their porch to cut. Um, once you cut it, you can bring it back. And once you visit that porch, you'll see the setup, how they have a table. They may have a basket for pick up, a basket for drop off, a basket to pick up to cut, a basket to drop off what you cut. Just whatever, um, whatever you can do to help, is, um, that's what we're requesting and we're needing. The, the more people that cut, 
the more of us can sow. And you got so many churches involved. It's multi-denominational. It's, it's churches from all over, I guess, this county, maybe more. I don't know. But uh, it's amazing how this took off, isn't it? It is. We have been, we have been astounded at, at how this has just gone. I mean, it's been less than a week, and we're up to, we know we got about 35 sowers, and we don't know how many more seems as we got there doing them. Well, you know, year-round we have churches, I know in Rents and up around uh, Stuckey Road, some of these churches, you have sewing clubs in churches that do, not this year-round, but they sew for people in Haiti or, or, or missionaries across the world. So you have people that do this, and a lot of these have just converted over to making masks now. How many masks do you think you're making that you've made since Friday? Oh, my goodness. I, I personally have made... 150 as of last night. Wow. Um, I've been averaging about 25 to 35 a day to donate. Um, I'm not sure. Um, some people sew faster than others. Some have more help. I've had um, some of my family cutting elastic, uh, pinning tucks, turning them, whatever. I mean, in my own household, I've had help. So that's why I've been able to turn out. And then, you know, of course, we're homeschooling right now. So we've got grandkids. We've got kids at home. So you're trying to sew and balance all of that out too. So I put a Facebook um, post and asked for prayer. If you can't sew and you don't want, you know, you, maybe you can't get out and you can't get over to help us to, to one of these porches to grab and help, but you can pray. We ask that you pray for us to have the supplies that we need and the strength and the endurance that we need to carry out this task. That's so important, there's no doubt. So. Like for you in particular, how long does it take you when you sit down to do that one mask? What, what process and how long does it take? Well, I cut a lot of them at one time and then I sat down and sew them. But from start to finish, once it's been cut, um, usually five to six minutes, I timed it somewhere between five and six minutes per mask. And you said everybody's different. Are you a good sewer? Are you a mediocre sewer? What, we're, we're, like if somebody's watching, say, well, I, there's no way I could do that in five minutes. What do you, what, what would you say about yourself personally? Are you a pretty good sewer or are you a novelist or what? Oh no, I've been sewing since I was 10 on a machine, so I think I'm pretty good by now. <laughs> so did you, were you prepared for, you're over here sewing, you're homeschooling, you got grandkids, you gotta feed them lunch, you gotta, you gotta do all these things. Uh, that's why you said pray, right? That's right. <laughs> Were you prepared? Think about this. We talked off the air a minute ago. We're in uncharted territory here. None of us have ever uh, seen this. You know, uh, you know, even at my age, in my 60 years, I've never seen anything in our country that just stopped everything like this. So, you know, we are in uncharted territory. So, and when, one thing about uh, Connie and I right now, we are practicing what we preach. Uh, we are a good... I don't know, 15, 18 feet apart. Uh, we're shooting on multiple cameras, uh, trying to do what we ask people to do, but it's so important. And I know your family gave you some instructions before you came today. Share those with me. My family instructed me not to touch anything that I didn't walk in this building with. So I'm trying to um, heed those instructions. And I understand that it's, it's, you know, it's mass fear, people are afraid, but this thing that has come, this virus, it is terrible. I'm also a retired nurse, so I really have a passion for this because I can't imagine. There's been times that I didn't have what I needed to take care of my patient, but it was because the insurance wouldn't pay for it, not because I didn't have it. Uh, you know, I couldn't get it. You know, it, this is just, this is a whole totally different thing. These uh, masks are very, very important, and a lot of people have the, the perception that they're not, um, they're not going to protect you. Well, what we're sewing is what the CDC said so It's 100% cotton. And they, they said there is no, um, no filter or no filler to put in the middle. You just do two pieces together. And if the CDC said sew it, we're sewing it. Good. Good instruction. We're going to take a break and come back and continue our conversation with Connie right after this. Stay with us. Have you been thinking about buying or selling a home, but you don't really know where to start? Well, my name is Duana Cooper, and I work for Caldwell Banker Curry Residential, and I could make your real estate transaction easy, pain-free, and even a little bit of fun. When you use a real estate agent, 
in your transaction, you have someone that works for you, someone that's in your corner. Someone that can help you negotiate, get through all the pages of that contract, as well as make sure that the transaction runs smoothly from start to finish. I'm honest and candid, and I pride myself on being friendly and approachable. Earlier this year, I was fortunate enough to sell this home on Orchard Lake Road, but I also sell investment property and commercial property. So if you have a need, please reach out to me. We'll get the job done and have a little fun. I'm Dwayna Cooper, and I work for Coldwell Banker Curry Residential. Portions of this program are brought to you by CurePoint Cancer Treatment, 2406 Bellevue Road in Dublin. At CurePoint Cancer Treatment, we're bringing you state-of-the-art cancer treatment right here at home. CurePoint Cancer Treatment. Check us out on Facebook. I thought I'd lost my business in that fire, but my agent was there before the flames were out. He said, together, we're going to rebuild. Our employees depended on it. My independent agent and auto owners made sure we didn't skip a beat. I mean, we didn't miss a single payroll. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Curry Maffet Insurance, now located in downtown Dublin. Call 272-1234. Welcome back, everybody. I'm continuing my conversation with Connie Gay. We're talking about uh, this ministry of women making masks for health care officials. Now, the deputies have really helped y'all. I was at the Sheriff's Department yesterday, and they're really, you know, their job is to protect and serve. Well, they've done a lot of serving right here lately, you know, taking medications and groceries, and, and I know they're helping y'all also, aren't they? They are. They are um, picking up from uh, the porches and taking them to the uh, facilities wherever they're needed and requested. Go through the list, uh, like the size of elastic, and, and, and let's go through the supplies and make sure. And I want y'all to listen close. You know, grab your pencil and paper, whatever, but uh, we've got some real, like the elastic has to be. Now, you mentioned some of the things from the Dollar Tree or wherever a while ago, but uh, uh, go through the list of supplies that not, maybe not just you need, but there's other people that need certain things. So just, you know, give us an exhaustive list. We need thread, white thread, um, elastic, we need one eighth and one fourth inch elastic and 100% cotton fabric. Sheets, pillowcases, what, what, what all falls under that fabric? You just have to read labels on stuff because they have so many blends of this and that, but it has to be 100% cotton. Where are y'all, I know you mentioned, you know, probably the local doctors and things. Is the hospital, you, you're a retired nurse. Are they using these at Fairview? Are they using them in Vidalia? Tell, where, do you, where do you know of that they're using these masks? We have delivered um, numerous to, I'm not sure what the number is, to Fairview. We've delivered to the medical center in Dublin. We've delivered to the children's clinic, to some of the um, OBGYN offices to some of the urgent cares. We have delivered to multiple places for the, um, and some of the nursing homes for the um, healthcare workers. Okay, I know Rhonda Baker, she's really jumped in. She's a teacher and uh, her kids are grown. So she's really got in here and, and, and tried to help spearhead this with you and some others. But uh, y'all are working all over the community, but now Rhonda is a drop off. That was one of the addresses you give me on Damien Drive, right? Correct. Okay, now you've got different baskets on a table. What do they represent? I know you can drop off, pick up. Is there anything else represented? Finished products, what? Yes, that she has baskets and they're labeled with what? Um, if you need supplies, there's supplies in a basket like for uh, sewing needles, elastic, that type stuff is in a basket, thread. If you need to uh, pick up some to cut, that, that fabric is in a basket. If you've already cut, there's a basket for you to put what you've already cut. And if you've um, already sewn some and need to donate, there's a basket that you can put those in. So are you close to wearing out your sewing machine? I pray we are not. <laughs> you can buy them pretty cheap at Walmart, can't you? You can, but um, most, most people that sew like I do, you got two or three anyway, so. You always got a backup. How challenging has it been for you? I mentioned a while ago homeschooling and grandkids. How challenging has it been for you personally to go through this season in our life? It's very challenging because actually, I'm going to share with y'all, 
we are not able to sleep because we're up at three o'clock in the morning sewing. I got up at 6.30 this morning and woke up at six, got up at 6.30 and started. I mean, it, it's just, it drives you. And that's why we need prayer for the strength and the endurance because we are, um, we are exhausted, but our minds won't shut down because we want to do this and we have a strong desire to do this. And it, it, you know, it's rough when you don't get but three or four hours sleep. Then you got to deal with kids and homeschooling. You got to do your, you know, your housework, your cooking, all your normal things. Plus, you try to get this done. So, yeah, it's a lot of pressure, but it's a good pressure. Absolutely. Uh, now, you go to Liberty Baptist Church, and uh, you're a part of a church that has so many ministries. So, uh, this is just one of many. Uh, do you have your Sunday school class involved in this? If you have people in your church involved, because uh, I know y'all are strung out. We've got uh, your pastor on the air right now, as a matter of fact, doing a show. But uh, uh, tell me about uh, tell me about your your church personally. Well, actually, some of our church members have reached out to me that um, I'm friends with on Facebook. But as large as that church is, of course, we don't all of us don't know each other. But the ones that are aware of what we're doing have reached out. Um, some are sewing, some are offering supplies, offering to buy supplies or whatever. So, um, you know, just the ones that know me and we're friends on Facebook, they have definitely reached out. You go to a wonderful church. What is it like being a, a member of Liberty Baptist Church? Well, actually we went, left a small church and ended up at Liberty and that was terrifying because we'd always been in a smaller church <laughs> to go to such a large church. But they ha we have three services um, on Sunday morning. So it's like, you know, you can, you can pick and choose which service you need to go to, but it's like one big family and it doesn't matter who you cross up with, everybody loves everybody. And I've, I've actually never been to a church where you, you feel loved and received by no matter what you look like, no matter what walk of life you come from. Nobody knows if you got a new outfit or an old outfit. They don't care. They care about your heart. They care that you are saved and um, that you are living your life for Jesus. That's what they care about. Amen. And what a wonderful pastor you have. Amen. We're going to take another break and we're going to come back and wrap things up. Stay with us. We'll be back right after this. To so many of you who count on us for your prescription medication needs, I'd like to thank you for your years of trust. To those who've yet to choose Tomlinson Pharmacy and Medical Park Pharmacy, I invite you to stop by and discover what makes us different. Tomlinson Pharmacy is a mainstay among downtown businesses, welcoming customers with a smile and carrying on a decades-long tradition of caring and trusted service. Your time is important, so we'll strive to see that your prescriptions are filled in minutes, not hours. With all prescriptions, our pharmacists are available to consult with you, answering any and all questions about your medications. We know your day can be hectic, so we provide free delivery within city limits and refills through our IVR phone system, website, or mobile app. Tomlinson Pharmacy also stocks a wide array of over-the-counter medications and medical supplies. Wendell and Wendy Smith provide hands-on local ownership to ensure your satisfaction, and you'll always be treated like family offering prompt, acute, and caring service for your prescription and other medication needs, visit us today at Tomlinson Pharmacy. Come experience a difference. Are you ready for something different? OFTC offers educational training that works. Education that's fast, affordable, with hands-on experience. From caring instructors invested in your success to a supportive community, OFTC is your path to a career opportunity. And most OFTC students graduate debt-free thanks to the HOPE Career Grant, which offers free tuition in over 72 programs of study. Think differently about college and make a change. Choose OFTC. OFTC is an equal opportunity institution. Welcome back, everybody. We'll wrap things up with Connie Gay. We are talking about uh, this ministry uh, making health care masks for the hospital and the doctors and, and, and the medical community. Um, but y'all are sending these everywhere, Connie. Run down again as we recap. Where all have these masks went? Well, we have requests from Eastman, Fort Valley, Sandersville, Cochrane, Trutland, Wrightsville, and as far as Effingham. We have sent to um, several of these places, but we have not made it down as far as Effingham yet. I do, however, have a cousin in the area 
that um, is attempting to um, do some of these masks, if she could find the supplies. That's been our hardest thing is keeping uh, enough supplies to do what we need to do. The elastic has been our hardest thing. We can pretty much find some fabric, but we gotta have 100% cotton. Um, we can't use anything but 100% cotton. That's CDC says 100% cotton, not us. And the elastic has been really, truly, probably our hardest thing to um, find has been the elastic. And this has been a family affair. I know your son's even been out shopping for you, hadn't he? Yes, bless him, he did yesterday <laughs> morning. Went to Walmart and sent me a picture and said, Mama, is this what you need? I said, yep, that's it. So he bought out all they had. Okay, and you just had a number. I asked you earlier how many y'all had distributed. I think you just had a number come in on your phone, didn't you? About 600 so far has been delivered. Wow. Okay, let's run back. If you're just joining us, I'm talking to Connie Gay, and we're talking about uh, a group of women uh, across many churches, too many to name, I'll tell you that. And, and the thing is, a lot of them don't even know each other. They just started this thing, started last Friday, a snowball. But uh, if you're just joining us, we need a list. There's a, a list of supplies we need. And Connie, I want you to run down that list again. We need one eighth inch, one fourth inch. We can use one half inch and cut it if we have to. Elastic. And then we need 100% cotton fabric. Okay, and we could use sewers or, or no, no matter where you are, if you're, if you're looking at us on YouTube, you don't need their permission to do this. Do what they're doing. You mentioned Effingham County, your cousin down there. You know, if you can sew and you can do this, there's somebody in your community. If you live in Soperton or if you're watching us in Twiggs County or Eastman or wherever right now, uh, uh, just do something. And, and Connie, one thing, and I know you've seen it, well, maybe you hadn't, you've been on a sewing machine, but these last few weeks, I've seen so many acts of kindness. You have been so kind in this community. It might have been letting somebody go at the gas pump ahead of you or go at, at the grocery store to go ahead of you, some senior citizen, or, or you made soup or chili for the shut-ins at your church. But there's just been so many acts of kindness. And uh, Connie, and you know this, we live in a great community, don't we? We do. I am, this, this, through this, I have really become proud to say that I'm a part of Lawrence County. It's just been amazing. I've had people from um, Douglas, when you're talking about, we were talking about supplies, that have uh, ordered online and had those shipped to my home. I received a package yesterday of 300 black elastic um, ponytail holders that we can use for the elastic on these um, if, when we can't find the elastic. A big old envelope came and there was 300 in there. The, um, I've got fabric that's being shipped to me. I've got elastic that's being mailed from Florida to me. I mean, it's just been amazing when you put your need out there, how God will meet it. You just got to put it out there. That's right. And that's the good thing about Facebook. You know, you got all that negative political mess. And, uh, and I'll have to tell you, I told somebody this morning, let's give politics a break, y'all. You know, I don't care who you voted for or, or what party you for. Let's give it a break. There's too much to do in this community right now. And it's time for the church it's time for us to let our light shine in the church and show the world what the church is all about. And you know, uh, God didn't send his son to earth to be a superstar, he sent him to serve. And that he taught us to serve, he taught the disciples to serve. And that's what Connie and Rhonda and all, uh, uh, Pam, uh, Roland and all these people, that's what they're doing. They're not staying up at three o'clock in the morning getting up again at whatever time you get up, Connie. Uh, for your own good and then having to homeschool and cook and do and, 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 and get bothered with TV people, but uh, you're doing it to serve, aren't you? Yes, that's what we are. We are the hands and feet of Jesus. That's what we're called to do. And that's what all of us feel like that we are doing is being the hands and feet of Jesus at this time with this um, dire need that we have. Amen, amen, and you sure are. And, and I wanna thank everybody watching. You've been so good. Uh, uh, you know, Connie, I was talking about all these acts of kindness. I got back to my office yesterday at the station and some of the women in this community had brought me uh, all kind of food and Vienna sausage and crackers and things to take to the homeless with our homeless ministry. So you have not forgotten the least of us. And that's what we have to remember. Matthew 25 reminds us of that. He says, whatever you did do to the least of my brethren, you do to me. So we need to remember that even in this time, the homeless and the lost and the hopeless, 
uh, and the downtrodden, they need our help. And you can do something, whatever it is, let your light shine. It don't have to be make masks. It don't have to be feed the homeless. But let your light shine. Call, call someone in your church. Call an elderly person in your church and just say, I was thinking of you. I love you. And I just want to know, do you need anything? It can be a small thing. Uh, but in, then it can be a big thing in someone else's life. And just like this that Connie, y'all are doing, it might have started out small last Friday, but the dominoes have started to fall, and now you see how big it's gotten, don't you? Yes, it is way bigger than we ever thought. And um, if you have any kind of organizing skills, we could use those. Anybody that doesn't sew, if you could be a contact person for us, if you could help patrol some of the uh, requests we're getting. We've got uh, Miss um, Dawn uh, Wood, Mama Dawn, as a lot of people know her, Mama Wood. She has been fantastic the past couple of days. She has been policing our um, uh, medical mask mission group that's on Facebook. She's been collecting all the data, and, and so we can sit and sew and you know, make this happen. But we need people like that that is willing to run and grab this stuff off these mailboxes or front porches or whatever. People that just to volunteer, if you can't sew, that's fine. We can still use you. If you want to be a part of this, just reach out to us, and we'll give you something to do. Uh, check your phone. I want you to give the numbers one more time, Connie, but I know your phone's been going off while <laughs> we've been here with questions like, how do I cut a straight line? How do I do this? How do I do this? Where do we take this? So I know in this uh, 20, 25 minute, 30 minute show, your phone's been going off, but I do want you to go over those numbers as soon as you pull them up. But uh, we, we just want you to call one of these numbers. If you have elastic, if you have needles, look, Money really won't help right now because we can't find the supplies. It's great to donate money in most situations, but now they really need the supplies. So if you've got the white thread or the elastic or the 100% cotton, whatever, fabric uh, at the house or, or at your mother's house or whatever. I know I went by my mom's house this morning and she gave me sewing needles and some thread and different things to bring. We have, um, so far we've distributed about um, 600 masks. Wow. But um, it, I, I can't express to you just how dire the need is for mostly the elastic because all the store shelves are empty. Um, I got up at 6 this mor 6.30 this morning and I made an order for Joann's. I ordered 14 different items. I got an email in just a little while telling me that five of my items were not available. So like um, James said, the money is not doing us any good because we can't get the product. But if you have the product at your house, you know, the stores will restock eventually once this epidemic is over and you can, you can restock your own supply. But if you have it, we're in dire need of it now. And if you could, could part with it, we would certainly appreciate it. Okay, give us the numbers one more time. We have distributed at least 600 masks. Um, she um, had 300 in the washer last night, and I, I need to go over the process of this. Now, we make them at home, we uh, bag them, and they come by and pick them up off our porch, our mailbox, or wherever. Then Rhonda takes them, our little group, um, portion of this group, because it's a big group. She takes um, those to her home, and she washes and dries those. And then she has to remove them from the dryer with gloves and put them in a, in a new Ziploc bag, and the Ziploc bags have been donated, and thank you for whoever did that. Um, and then she, she has those packaged and then the sheriff's department comes by, picks them up off her front porch, takes them to the hospital or whatever facility. I know at the hospital they got a special thing that they do with them. They take them in immediately, they launder them again, and they spray them with some kind of substance. Um, I'm not sure what it is that they're spraying them with, but they have a process that they have to go through. And I mean, that's, that's all CDC uh, required stuff that they're having to do. So it's not just we sew a mask and we hand it to somebody. It, it doesn't work that way. It's a whole process that we go through. And to really, for us to know how many people are sewing or how many people are contributing, that's, that's really impossible for us to keep up with right now. Okay, is there anything before we close that we've not mentioned, anything you want to stress, anything we've left out? No, I, don't, I think we've covered it all. But if you have any elastic at all, any cotton fabric, 100% cotton fabric at all that you can part with. We've had monetary donations, but like James said, the money's not doing us any good. We got, because we just need the product. And not only are we doing it in our community, but other communities are doing it too. So it's not like 
we can run over to the next town and grab up the supplies that we need because they're not there because other people are doing the same thing we're doing. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, please help with this ministry. Please go through your closet, go through your sewing supplies and, and try to find this elastic, uh, the fabric you may have. You may have forgotten about it. You stored it away in a, a closet. Just go in there and check because they could use the supplies. Like Connie said, you can replenish your stock as soon as the stores replenish theirs. But uh, uh, Connie Gay, she's actually a member at Liberty Baptist Church, but there are so many churches. And if you're watching us now, ladies, thank you from the bottom of our heart. And I know Don Avery and uh, Dr. Harrison, you've seen on here this week, I know they're thankful for it because they're in a panic mode. And, and a lot of these doctor's officers are in panic mode because they can't get them from their suppliers. So it, it, the supply chain is just kind of dried up. So please help with this ministry. If you can't help with this, go out today and let your light shine. I know when I was growing up, we used to sing a song as kids, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. And there was a, a line in it that's very appropriate now. It said, hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Please don't let your light be hidden under that bushel right now. Go out in our community, wherever you live. If, you don't, if you're not in Dublin or Orange County, wherever you live, go out and let your light shine today. Thank you so much, Connie, for joining us today. And thank you for joining us right here on TV35. You're not going to do it? Come on. Just one time. He loves music and books. Don't you? You do. So I remember right before I was uh, like went to sleep, I, I was just praying, you know, and I was like, God, please don't let me wake up to bad news about my baby. It was just a huge blessing because, you know, I mean, I've never met these people before. This is my first child, um, and I mean, it, they were like family. What would you say to one of the nurses if they were here now? Stop. Um, I would. Why would you hold that? <laughs> There is one over here. Oh. <laughs> How are you? Good. Hey, Brax. So what was I saying? What would you say to one of the nurses if they were here? <laughs> I would just say thank you. <laughs> I wasn't going to do this. <laughs> you know, I know that you were just doing your job, so to speak, but you gave me everything. <laughs>